Joining us now in the EBMT TV studio to discuss advances in prevention and treatment of GVHD, I'm delighted to welcome Olaf Penek, EBMT Transplant Complications Working Party, Lars klingen Gyada from the EBMT Trainee Committee, and Lynn Lepler from the EBMT Nurses Group Research Committee. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Lynn, I wonder if we could maybe kick off um, by asking you how big an issue is GVHD around Europe's transplantation wards today? Yeah, I think despite uh, the improvements we have made in transplant procedures and supportive care practices, GVHD is still a major challenge for all European centers. That's at least my impression that we still have no proper treatment at all lines and we still need more treatment options and better support our patients. And Olaf, would you concur with that? And what does that mean for patients and, um, and the long-term impacts of that? Certainly I concur with that. So when you look in the, in the EBMT database, for, for instance, we have thousands of patients. And when we look over the decades, we see that the incidence of the chronic form of the disease, chronic graft versus host disease, has not changed over the last 30 years. So we still have the, the big, uh, big problem. Lars, I may wonder if we could talk about personalized medicine a little bit. How is personalized medicine changing GVHD treatment and how are therapies being tailored to individual patients? Yeah, so um, as a trainee, I've always been intrigued by the way that it's so difficult for us to predict who will develop GVHD and when, um, based on the, the normal risk factors we have. So I think there's a, a role for biomarker-related biomarker uh, research in this, and I've always been very inspired by the magic biomarker groups and the consortiums and the different, different research that, that has inspired also. So um, later today, there's um, uh, a session on this uh, biomarker research, and I will encourage everybody to, to watch this. A young colleague of mine will also present some data here on some of the magic biomarkers that she also has been, been um, inspired by. So I hope that this will pave the way for us being able to predict more who needs and more intense GVHD prophylaxis, and, and when do we need to escalate treatment for GVHD. Lynn, let me come back to you. With, with these new therapies emerging, what challenges are you facing in nursing care for patients and, and what are the best practices that you need to keep in mind? For many centers, it's very um, heterogenic if you have access to these new therapies. Some centers have compassionate programs for Belomusodil, for example, or but most of the centers struggle to reach the new therapies. So. There's ruxolotinib, I think, is quite available for many of the centers, but all the others there I observe, at least in the nurses' research uh, committee, that they um, tell me that it's hardly hard to get these therapies. But in general, I think from the nurses' perspective, we need to support patient self-management and managing possible side effects or to um, support them in being adherent to their medication and to help them in, yeah, to go through these therapies and maybe um, support their infection prevention measures. At least this is one of the side effects of uh, ruxolotinib that they have often neutropenia during the um, therapy lines and we help them to um, prevent as best as possible any further infections and to go uh, through these therapy lines in a uh, most stable um, condition. Yeah. Olaf, let me come to you and ask you, is there anything you'd like to add in terms of availability of new therapies, but also in terms of the new therapies, how do you balance the practical realities of patient care in GVHD? Yeah, first about availability, I think um, it's very, you know, it differs. Um, really in between the countries and in between the centers. So for instance, continental Europe has good access usually to ruxolitinib, which is second line treatment in, in GVHD. But other countries like UK, for instance, it's not available. Um, patients have uh, no access to that. And we're not talking about the third world country, obviously, uh, for, for UK. So you, you really see that there are differences. Um, in continental Europe, we have difficulties in access to the third line therapies right now, uh, therapies which are already already approved in like um, in the US, Japan and, and others um, like Balamusadil, you mentioned uh, Itlin and, um, and also we have a lot of insecurity because there's lack of, of data. There are very different options. We have at least 15, 20 different drugs we could use. Uh, but there's few data on, um, on uh, which drug you should uh, prefer and I think um, that's uh, really the big challenge. 
Lars, let me come on to talk a little bit more about clinical trials. What role do they play in shaping the future of GVHD treatment and, and where do you see the most promise? Yeah, um, so I, I think clinical trials are, are the cornerstone and the gold standard for how we should um, get evidence for new treatments uh, these days and it should always be that way also. Uh, but I agree with what Olaf says that we, we already have a lot of immunosuppressant and potential ways of treating GVHD but we don't have the data to support um, uh, further down the line which treatments are the best for the patients. Um, so I hope that we can, within communities internationally, we can start investigator-initiated research to, to address these questions and we luckily have had some of these initiatives also proving out uh, to uh, get positive results um, and we hope to continue on doing that in the future also. Let me ask you all about guidelines and initiatives a little more, if there are any that we haven't already touched on. Um, what, which ones have had the most impact, would you say, on GVHD care and, and where can they be improved? Olaf, I'll come to you first. Okay, I must disclose I'm a bit biased because I'm first author of the EBMT guidelines on graft versus host disease, but I think indeed worldwide they, they have uh, most influence. They're, um, they're uh, prominently published in Lancet Hematology, which is a good uh, journal. And I think worldwide they, uh, they have the widest distribution on, on, on patient care. Lynn? Yes, I agree. So the centers I'm in contact with, they mostly use these guidelines for um, GBHD um, decisions and treatment. And so I think they are widely implemented, yeah, I fully agree. Let, let me just finish by coming to you all very quickly because we've heard that there are a number of challenges still um, that are uh, present. How would you like to see the future in the next sort of short term future, long term future and how hopeful are you for, for patient care and, and for your roles? Let me, um, I'll come to you Olaf and we'll just work, work round. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think um, we have discussed even in the short interview that there are some challenges remaining. High incidence of GVHD, also high, you know, morbidity load on the patients, so low quality of life. So we should work on that. I think that the first big step is really what I mentioned um, to really assess uh, patient reported outcomes and design studies focusing with, you know, this endpoint. Lynn. Yeah, I also see the future in assessing digital uh, patient reported outcomes and to go combine it or use it in evaluating the, um, the disease trajectory and also to tailor the medications correctly. And uh, we uh, have a huge uh, research project developing um, a new um, digital tool to monitor for GVHD symptoms um, or patient reported symptoms. So hopefully we can contribute a small piece of research to this um, emerging field and make it a bit, little bit easier for patients to report back on their symptoms. So. And last finally, how hopefully you for the future? Well, I think we need to be because it's, it is tough to see patients suffering from chronic GVHD, which can be a debilitating disease after a transplant. And I think therefore we, even though it, it can, we are still having struggles in front of us, we need to be optimistic and keep on the good spirit that we someday will, will make sure that the chronic GVHD only will be a minor problem for, for patients after transplant. Lars, Olaf, Lynn, thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you. You're welcome.